Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Car Health for you. So in today's video, we're working on a 2016 plate Vauxhall Adam. So the issue in this car is something that seems to be very common in the Adams. This is actually the second one we've done, however, it's the first 16 plate one. The other one was a 14 plate, so it is quite up through them all. And I have told a few of the people about the issues. So what it is, is your speedometer, everything's working perfectly fine. The fuel lights flashing and the fuel gauge doesn't work so the fuel gauge it stays off um some people call it gauge but it stays off constantly now there's two faults for that one can be the ecu needs updating with the newer cars that's tend to what happened um i was talking to someone who had an 18 plate one and that's what her car needed doing but because she bought it from a dealers it went straight in and it got it done under warranty and came back out and it fixed the issue however this 16 plate one it's been to dealers had it done came back out and it's still got the same fault. They told they told the customer straight away they went. It's an issue in the float. Obviously, dealers gonna charge a fortune, you know what they like charging now and like. So what you've got to do, if I zoom out here, is you've got to change, you've got to take the tank out, and you've got to change this little part here. Now I apologize, I haven't got no gloves on. It's uh any mechanic will tell you the rip. Right, so this is the part that we've actually got to change. This is the old part now, so we don't need that. That's finished. Um that's not red diesel before anyone tries to say that. That's actually petrol out of here because the tank did have quite a decent amount in. We had somewhere to siphon it so we can pour it back into the car once we've cleaned it up. Make sure there's uh, everything nice and clean in the car before it goes back in. But anyway, over to this. So this is the actual fuel pump itself. Now, if I put this on top of here, I don't want to put it in the tank because I haven't cleaned it yet. Now, what actually went wrong was this here. So as fuel goes in, this rises up go to the top as fuel goes and this rises up like that and it tells the car it's got fuel in so what was happening for some reason this wasn't rising they've got a new one of this it's from dealers as well and the way you change this is there's two little clips so there's one if i zoom out a little bit instead of my finger i'll use a screwdriver be a bit more obvious for you so there's a little pushy clip there and a pushy clip there they push inwards and it just slides out if you use any amount of force you're doing something wrong you shouldn't need to use any force whatsoever so the second part is obviously you've got to trace the wiring back through as you can see it goes through there and there it is in that clip again the clip's got a little bit of attachment there you just slightly tug it and it comes out it's got the little wire harness there. that's not cracked that's how the wire harness is it holds the wires up like that and you feed them in off you go so that's that and what that effectively do will show you how to um keep it in fit now once you're there if you haven't been open before like this one hadn't you're gonna have an issue so what it is is this rubber seal here had made it all stick together and see it's got a bit powdery we're going to change the seal and that's the cup that goes on top and that holds it all together now the top of here i'll just show here you've got a socket that goes into there which is obviously pride and power fuel inlet or outlet i'm guessing uh fuel comes out of there might go in i could be completely wrong you've got another pipe there and you've got another pipe there so if i zoom out a second you can see that's the setup what we've removed so we've took the pipe off there we've left that pipe with us and we've took the connectors off there they're still underneath the car now in order to do the car the way we've done it is because we're outside we've put the axle on axle stands followed by the jack and we did have to remove the exhaust so if i can just get underneath the car quickly and just show you there so goes into brackets there um so the exhaust will obviously go into that hanger there if you follow a bit more back it goes into uh, that hanger there and if you go a bit more back you can see it's just dropped down now these are all the lines that's the power cable we've just got it out the side there's the other lines and this is where your tank would be initially so that's a big massive outlet i'll show you that where it is on the tank actually um that other pipe that's still attached to the tank goes in that one there and this one here it will go i'll show you where this one will go because it'll be easier if i show you and that's a clippy one if you remember the blue clippy one now this has got if you can just if you can see it there it's got a blue clip in it and that clip just pops up and then you pull the pipe upwards you shouldn't need to use any pressure whatsoever I would advise doing it with an empty tank of fuel just because it makes it 10 times more easy now this tank we're doing it on the ground if you've got a lift it's easier obviously everything's possible on the ground now this car as you can see it's got studs there it doesn't have a heat shield 
Um, it's not necessary to have one. A lot of cars I've seen don't have them. It's just because some mechanics don't put them on or sometimes they've got to dealers. Even dealers I've seen haven't put them back on. Now, all the job of the heat shield is it just absorbs some of the heat and protects the rest of the car. Anyway, this hasn't got it on there. So if yours has got the heat shield, it will just come off. And the way to take it off is this. Um, there's little crown type of clips and you just twist them and they come off. Now, it's nothing to worry about if you haven't got one. If you have got one, you know how to take it off. The rest of the exhaust, as you can see, is still on. You don't need to take it off. You haven't messed with any of the other pipes. The brake lines and everything are perfectly fine, as you can see. You've got enough space to do it on the floor. Now, one thing I will say is if you are doing the car on the floor, make sure you have someone with you, just for health and safety reasons. I'll show you where these two go. So that's a blue thingy clip, and that's a normal black pipe. Now, if we head back over to the tank i'll show you on here so the black pipe will go into there and the blue thingy clip will go into there now that'll just pop on and the blue thing you can just push it in like that and this one you can just twist it on ever so slightly now you don't want to be putting any pressure on the pipes whatsoever as you can see no pressure was on there we've caused no damage to the tank in order to get the tank off that other pipe i showed you by the way goes there so it'll just slide onto there um just make sure it's on properly try and get it as close to the edge and it just goes on with a flat uh, a flat head or an uh, 8 mm socket it was um, it's easier to use just a socket now you've got a bolt there holding the tank up you've got a bolt straight opposite it holding the tank up and you've got two on this side so in total you've got four bolts holding the tank up this is what the bolts look like there's nothing special i'll even give you the size if i can find the tool um, if I can just get that ratchet, just asking someone who's helping me. Like I said, if you're underneath a car, you never want to be by yourself. And the size for this ratchet is a 13 mm. So the tank's held on by 13 mm ones, and the other ones 8 mm. The top of the tank has your pipes clipped in, so they just push in and push out. Nothing. That said, no pressure whatsoever. Now, if anyone tells and says, "Well, you can get this from underneath the seats," the thing is in some cars you can that is true in some cars you can get it but um the adams you can't now we were working on a vector the other day it was an 09 plate unfortunately i didn't make a video on that what happened is that it was a diesel it was a two litre diesel customer put the wrong fuel in and all i did was shot a pump in they hadn't drove it they put it in well i said they hadn't drove it they shot the wrong dip fuel into the can they drove ever slightly down the road and realized what they've done wrong so all i had to do was on the side of the road Take the back seat off, get this out, shut a submersible pump down there, drain all the fuel out of the submersible pump, clean that, put it all back in, add fresh fuel into the car, the correct fuel, change the fuel filters, uh, change the fuel filter and just run the car for a few seconds and it ran perfectly fine. Now that, because it was a typically old car, it worked with the newer cars, they tend not to take a lot of the crap from you. It is a similar method, you just siphon the old fuel out, as you can see guys. Now what we're gonna do is, we've got to make sure we empty that out, Take that back off. I'm gonna clean this up. Same bad day as the top of it. We're gonna clean all this up. Make sure this functions properly. I'm gonna close it all back up. Lift the tank back up. Um, if you do struggle to get the tank back up, like I said, now it's empty. Weighs nothing practically, nothing like that. Is honestly one finger there, and as you can see, we can just we can move the tank wherever. We can. We've got a tiny bit of fuel still in it. Not a lot, a tiny bit. I'd say that's probably a good. In today's rate, that's probably about 15, 20 quid worth actually. But um, do expect to lose some fuel. Like we have lost some fuel. Nothing you can do about it. At the end of the day, you're working with the petrol. When you're working with the fuel pipes, you will expect some fuel to come out. Once you've done that, clean it all up, put it all back on together. Then you've got to remember this is empty. There's no fuel. The cars might have air into it. Now, because it's not diesel, you won't typically need to bleed it. Um, however, don't take me up my word and that. What you've got to do is just cycle the ignition four or five times. Starting it, cycle it five times, start it on the sixth time, and I just mean taking it from the off onto the on where all the lights and the speed up come on. You should see the fuel needle go up and down, and that'll fix your fuel issue. Anyway, if you do get stuck, please give me a shout, and I am happy to help you. Just write in the comments or whatever. And like I said in uh, the previous video, we can talk over FaceTime or whatever, Skype or whatever, whatever's helpful, just to help you out with the videos. Once again, this is a 2016 plate Voxel Adam. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna crack on and put this back together before we lose light. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.